As higher education adapts to change, students are demanding an education that is relevant to their lives and communities. How can we prepare students to be ready for career changes, be ready for technology changes, be ready for cultural changes. Educators today are working to meet these demands through meaningful and engaging academic experiences. Teach students the knowledge of a discipline or an area, help them understand how that discipline applies to the world, and help them understand themselves. This is a new student. These learners need to be engaged, they need to have options, and they need to recognize that this system is here for them. We need to do that for people who are not well served by the educational system that we have. It may take more time and it may take more investment, but if we don't do that, our global standing in the future will be affected. To meet the challenges of the future, educators have been exploring innovations in general education, college curriculum that all students take. General education is basically the prerequisites you have to do to get to doing your, um, your major coursework. Basically just the first two years of your college is spent on GE education. So. I remember my freshman year I kind of looked at general education. Oh cool, I just did four years of high school. Do I have to just take all these requirements again? They're not engaging with these classes like, oh this is a part of my experience. This is what's really making me prepared and getting me ready for my major courses later. So it's in our interest to make them the best we can. They're the things that students take on their way in the door when they're still making up their mind whether or not they should have come to college in the first place. And they're our opportunity to prepare people for the kind of intellectual versatility they're going to need after they graduate when they get into an economy that's changing very fast. There's no reason those courses have to be the same courses delivered in the same way they were decades ago. They can be prepared and put together in ways that really reflect today's student and the environment in which today's students are going to be working and going forward with their studies. One prominent innovation is thematic GE Pathways, general education courses linking together many disciplines exploring complex real-world problems such as sustainability, social justice, and health and wellness. What the thematic pathways does for the student is it gives them a chance to look at some issue that's happening right now today and, and go from class to class understanding, hey, I'm looking at it through the lenses of a sociologist. I'm looking at it through the lenses of a biologist. And then it gives them a little practice on the different methodologies of the disciplines to approach this issue. Instead of taking random courses, they take courses within a path and the path offers them some um, cohesiveness. The basic idea is that the PATH project is, the co is a collaboration between Pierce College and um, California State University at Northridge. If you take this group of classes here at Pierce, when you transfer to CSUN, you can be minor in civic engagement. And there are classes you didn't know, okay. When students transfer here from Pierce, and they do send us hundreds of students every year, if they've done the PATH, which is four courses at Pierce, then they can do two more courses here and finish out the path, and they'll also be eligible for the minor once we have it in place. There are five different paths that, that are sort of um, around a the theme. Um, social justice, aesthetics and culture, sustainability, uh, health and wellness, and global studies. They fulfill those requirements within um, the larger context of the theme. Food is a big issue in California. Uh, so having a food garden here in campus sounds like a perfect fit in order to teach some of our sustainability principles through the food garden. I'm taking a geography class and an anthropology class, and they all connect through the theme of food, of how in anthropology it shows you how different cultures treat their food, and geography how different areas of the world treat their food, and it shows how different studies all connect through one theme. It all came together. A lot of the classes I took and that I'm taking right now overlap with one another, so they make it more interesting as of just taking random courses. Where else can we just come together, different disciplines, 
different disciplines they can come together and just express what their needs are. And of course, our main focus is one thing, is student success. In another innovative general education strategy, students in first-year seminars receive credit for developing electronic portfolios demonstrating their growth. What's been interesting about what we've done in Sacramento is that we've used electronic portfolios to help students move through their upper division general education requirements a lot faster by recognizing that the, the work they do as undergrads at the community college and using that to certify their level of competency in writing and in um, general education and critical thinking at the four-year university. When we have been able to find those students and get them connected with opportunities and services directed towards transfer, like an eFolio system, their experience has been far more enriching uh, than students who are coming to the program um, right before they leave. I was surprised. I mean, a lot of people look at me like, how did you graduate so fast? Well, it's because of this program. But when I went to Sac State, I knew for well that I only need two years to graduate. And of course, because of this program, it only took me two years. Employers want to see more than just a resume. They want to see how we've made this e-portfolio to see all the accomplishments we've done, to see how we're well-rounded, if we participate in the community, how we can contribute and become a good asset to their company. And I had the academic goals essay, which is what I thought before mm -hmm. I started. So. How do I work with that? Well, I think it does change. Like this ePortfolio, what I like is that you can go back and change whatever you want because we're growing as a person here at Sac State. I'm not going to be the same person as I was. Portfolios are curriculum organizers and we're educating people for life. We're not educating people for work. That's really the value, I think, in keeping a portfolio. Another exciting approach in general education is public sphere pedagogy where students engage in real-world debates and public dialogue with their campus and community. Public sphere pedagogy began as a simple idea, which was how can we make courses that students find artificial or abstract or not relevant, relevant? Public sphere pedagogy is built on the idea that we should take curricular activities that are in the classroom and then connect them to a broader public sphere. And that can take a lot of different forms, but we want students engaging in dialogue and we want them engaging in dialogue in places and with people that are outside the classroom. We created a public dimension to students' work and they do traditional work, reading, writing, research, but for a public purpose. Let the debate begin. of volunteers, business people, owners, and community organizations uh, has that goal of making downtown Chico an enjoyable and a safer place. Uh, Randall has surveyed other cities and found what works and what doesn't work. Sit in line doesn't work. Uh, armed guards don't work. We're not exempt from any type of statistical analysis. Who cares what other cities do? We're Chico. We, we value our downtown. Our downtown is a major asset to this community. All these kids enjoy downtown. Public Sphere Pedagogy exists in the First Year Experience program and it encompasses several programs like the Great Debate and Town Hall Meeting. And one thing we've been really interested in is working with our community college partners locally and regionally to uh, part have their students participating in this kind of work as well. The students come here and they participate in the event right alongside the CSU Chico students. Anecdotally, they immediately afterwards talk about how they now they see themselves as capable of transferring, now they're excited about transferring, and quantitatively we know that the students who participate in the event are more likely to be successful in that course and they are more likely to be successful in a subsequent semester. The moment they understand that this has implications beyond their classroom, something extra happens and that's the innovative part. I think it's a great method of learning. Like, like you said, you, you get out and you practice your skills in front of, audience, in front of an audience and it's, other classes aren't really like that. It gets rid of the question, I don't understand why I'm doing this, how is this relevant? No one asks that question anymore because they see how the curriculum that they're engaged in actually matters and how people are making use of it in the real world. The bottom line is to develop in our students an understanding that they can make a difference. I mean, it's so trite and it's so true and we talk about you know, providing our students with the capacity that they can make a difference in their own lives and in their communities. And then to have a curriculum that celebrates that understanding and provides the experiences in order to prove it, I mean, that's when something really exciting occurs. 
Service learning connects students and their community through general education coursework addressing important social issues. Students understand what service learning is, they understand how it's connected to the course content, they are um, better prepared to enter into the community and link what they're learning in the course to their service. So I think that it makes sense for them. It gives them an opportunity to actually use their knowledge in the classroom and put it towards common good. You really talk about you know connecting the students to what's happening in the class. Put them out there and show them you know like here it is what we talked about in class the other day you know about hunger. Here it is in front of you. It just gave me so much growth as an individual and as a critical thinker because I really didn't think that I had the opportunity to change other people's lives. When students get out into the community where they may encounter people of different backgrounds, they're readier to serve and to learn about those communities. We are going out into the field and then students are using their bodies or their minds or they're acquiring a new skill set. So I would say they're more engaged. That really helped me see not only what we were learning in class about um, all the inequalities that we have here in our society, but also have that first hand. What this class actually did for me was we got to go outside, make connections like the ones I made at CEDC, uh, life-changing experiences. Through this program, we're educating our students to, to act on their education, to act in the community, to act for the greater good, and to really graduate students who are socially responsible and civically responsible and prepared to be that type of citizen long after graduation. Metro Academies prepare students to meet the challenges of their community through an innovative approach to general education combining long-term learning communities, student support services, and faculty development. All the Metro Academies have students traveling as a cohort, so it, might, it feels more like graduate school or it feels like you're, you're moving with a group and you have guides on the path and each of the Metro Academies has also a social justice theme as well as a career theme. How many of you heard the word social justice? How many of you think you can define it right now? Metro focuses on low income, first generation, college students, the first in their family to attend college. To fully learn, I feel like sometimes you have to look at things that you've already learned and stand back and take a look at it and say like, what, what does that mean? Why did, what was the point of learning that? The other, a uh, pillar of Metro is that we work locally. We work with our local high schools. Straight from high school, I came um, to SF State and I started in Metro. Um, and it was a brand new experience for me. It was something that was actually really mind-blowing because it was a brand new idea. This isn't just about changing one thing that's happening for one student in one class. It's really about what's going on in the classroom. It's about integrating academic and support services together. And it's also about institutional change, largely. We're looking at questions of faculty development. How are teachers trained to do this work? How are students trained and supported in their first two years? Are they taking classes that are relevant to them? Is their curriculum exciting? Does it have a connection to their home lives, to their personal experiences? I think Metro is a, is a more holistic approach than a lot of interventions I've worked with in the past in terms of education because it looks at the entire scope of what the student will encounter when they're in the university. I feel it's doing a lot to transform general education, pedagogy in general, uh, social justice themes, and I feel that these students uh, are going to eventually become community leaders. When we come to work, we're very much engaged with their empowerment. Supporting student success, educators from different disciplines, colleges, and systems are engaging in rich conversations building a growing community of practice. Curriculum innovation has to be faculty-centered. It has to be driven by faculty involvement. They're the ones who teach, they're the ones who understand curriculum, and they're the ones that have the responsibility for the curriculum. We have a variety of interventions that we can try to improve the way we serve our students. But at the end of the day, curriculum and faculty have to be involved in that effort. What we have to do is make the curriculum at the center of the degree as engaging and compelling as we can so that all those efforts to better serve our students fit together better than they do today. For me, that's exciting to see faculty start to realize the world's changing, we can do some things that are different, we can work together, it's exciting. Faculty and people inside universities have to see that this is not a fight of good and evil, but we have to own the new kinds of capacities around granular learning, the capacities of technology, and ask what is it that we can uniquely do as universities that the web can't. And by 2025, 
that is all that universities will be able to do better than the internet. We need to have students understand and we need to have faculty and institutions understand that the general education component is, is less about a belief structure and more about our promise to students that when they leave our institutions, they'll carry with them the skills and the competency they need to be citizens of the world today. A future version of the baccalaureate degree that takes advantage of the reforms will be characterized by a couple of things. It'll be clearly relevant and interdisciplinary from the first day. The idea that you do three units of this and three units of that and they have nothing to do with each other, I think is gonna go the way of the past because the fact is people are too busy and they can pick up the learning that they want in smaller bite-sized pieces and in ways that are more clearly connected to what they wanna get out of education. The other way that I think higher education is gonna look different in the future is that as a result of putting general education and learning in the majors side by side at every term of enrollment, it'll be easier for students to take on-ramps and off-ramps into higher education. And I think education is gonna to have to keep up if we wanna stay relevant. We want students to finish their degrees as better citizens, as better prepared for what we face. Instead of taking two years of classes that had nothing to do with my major, it gives me a purpose. If I didn't have this opportunity, I don't know what direction I'll be going. Probably still working in some job that I won't, I would only progress so far, and then that'll be the end of the road. That really put me in a position where I was like, okay, I'm not alone and we can all succeed. It was a big part of my whole college education and I'm gonna, I'm grateful for it and I am going to miss it. It was a great experience, I'm not going to lie, it's, I'm going to miss it a lot. So it kind of just made me want to be a better student and especially like, okay, I need to do this and I need to do this so I can get on that level and I can be above that level. And able to apply those concepts in the real world before I graduate was a real game changer.